SGC here. So um, this week we got a movie that wasn't really in the theaters. Actually, it was never released in the States, so we Canadians will never have gotten it. 13 Assassins actually came out in September of 2010 in Japan. It was released on DVD and Blu-ray in July of this year. So finally I got my hands on it at a good price of $12.50 on Blu-ray. So why am I doing this review? It's because I want to recommend it to you guys. At first, I would say it's like a Asian 300, or actually no, a Japanese 300, since it's like 13 dudes fighting about 200 plus guys, and it had the choke point concept in 300, where they got all the masses to go into this choke point and just kill them all that way. It happens here in 13 Assassins as well. But I think this is a much deeper movie than 300. First off, I recommend this movie because it was based on a true event. And it really did pave the way for the current Meiji era, the current Japan. I'll give you a link to a trailer and it'll be below in the description box. But I'll give you a brief synopsis right now. So it's the 1840s in Japan. That's a long time ago. Actually, it was only 171 years ago. Anyway, so it's 1840 and you have a tyrant coming into power. And the government ain't so happy about it. If you know Japanese history, you would know that back then Japan was run by Shogun and his retainers. And the emperor was, was like the queen of today who was really just a figurehead and he did all the ceremonial stuff and really didn't make that big of an impact. So you would ask, what's wrong with a tyrant coming into power? Just kill him off. Well, the problem was this tyrant is actually the shogun's brother. So realistically, the government couldn't really do anything about him because he's like, oh, you can't kill off your own brother. So some government officials were pretty worried about this tyrant because this tyrant was gung-ho about war and he was really going to push Japan back into it. So then we get to the story of how there is one Shogun Samurai who finds 13 other dudes to fight for him and try to kill this tyrant. That's pretty much the story! What would make me recommend this movie to you? Well, I think this movie really addresses the loyal and honor that Samurais are known for. And it really turns it on its head and it's totally different from what we think it is. The movie starts off with a scene of Harakiri. And if you didn't know, that's death by stabbing yourself here and going this way. It's pretty much like death by disbowelment, which is just leaking out your guts. For samurais that either don't want him to fall in the hands of the enemy, or for shame, or just plain old capital punishment. This movie really pulls at the strings of heart of a samurai. I mean, are you supposed to be loyal to your master or loyal to your country? Hmm. So the movie is like two hours and five minutes, not including credits. The action is pretty intense, as sword fighting is pretty lethal. Yes, of course, there is the suspense of disbelief. I mean, 13 guys took out 200 plus people. But you have to remember, these 13 were trained and good warriors. The 13 were in line of the old way, while the 200 were just moving on with the times and being not real samurais. I like historical set pieces. Just looking at the costume design, which is just traditional garb of just samurai, it's pretty normal, but the women are all plastered with that mercury makeup stuff that makes them pale and white. I think it's the mercury stuff anyway. So the acting, it was good. You really felt the need to just take out this tyrant so that the world can be saved in the Japan world. There's a rivalry that exists throughout the film between the main character and the tyrant's top officer. So here are some actors that you might have seen before. I'll post their drama wiki in the description box. So we have Yokuso Kojo here, who was in Memoirs of Geisha and Shall We Dance. He played the leader of the assassin group. You have Takayuki Yamada, who was in H2, my first Japanese drama that I finished, who plays the nephew of the assassin leader. You have Ihara Yoshi right here, who I last saw in Team Batista. He plays the leader's leader assassin's apprentice. And then you have Ichimura Masachiki, Chika who I last saw in Bambino, and he plays the tyrant's top officer. And lastly, you have the tyrant himself, who is played by Inagaka Goro, who is of SMAP fame. I didn't know it was him until I did this credit searching. So there you go, some of the major characters from the film, and well, the nephew and the apprentice are kind of subjective importance. So some nitpicking, nitpicking? Some of the traps that were used, kind of hard to believe that they pulled it off. But then again, 13 versus 200 and it was historical event. I guess I have to suspend my disbelief at times when watching films. So again, I recommend you this 
film. Check it out if you have the chance. Gore level, since this is an actual fighting film, um, it's not really that up there. The most brutal scenes are just when the tyrant goes nuts and just kill lots of people, innocent people. But beyond that, and the fight scenes, and the sword scenes throughout the film aren't really plastered with blood and gore like your traditional like, oh cut my arm off and I have a fountain of blood sort of thing, no. So please go check it out, um, I got it on Blu-ray from Amazon for like twelve fifty, so that was not bad at all. Like it, check it out, and see you Friday. Yokuso. Yokuso.